<laughs> you will need a break. Good evening. Welcome to the October 26, 2021 meeting of the Baquanic Township Council. Ms. Marsh. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the Township Clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as a legal notice in the Suburban Trends newspaper, and distributed to all persons requesting notice in accordance with Township policy. Please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer and a moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious Providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of Baquanic Township. Amen. 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 Will the clerk please call the roll? Mr. Tracy? Present. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Here. Mr. Hurd? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Mayor Russell? Here. We have a quorum. There are no presentations scheduled for this evening. At this time, are there any reports or comments from any of the volunteers serving our community? The next item on the agenda is public comments. The public comment period will be limited to a total of 30 minutes. An additional period for public comment is reserved later in the meeting. Individuals are requested to limit their questions and comments to three minutes. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized to come to the microphone and please provide your name and address for the record. Good evening, uh, my name is Adam Budesheim. I live at uh, 6 Robert Place. I'm not sure if this is the appropriate part of the council meeting, but um, I wanted to talk about an issue with a fence uh, on my property and um, an issue of uh, seeking a license for the fence. Is this the right time in the meeting to do this? This would be the right time. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, <clears throat> this is an issue that actually goes back uh, a little over 10 years, and uh, Mrs. Florence Lynch, I know she remembers it from- Excuse me, I'm sorry. Sorry? Could you give your name and address for the, you, you gave your name but not your address for the record. Six Robert Place. Did you? I'm sorry. Thank you. Can I continue? Yeah, sorry. Thank yeah. Uh, there's, a, our house is over by Greenview Park and behind our house and four other houses is a strip of land that has been essentially unused and is unusable and inaccessible um, since the development was built back in the 1960s. The previous homeowner had used it as if it were part of her yard, had mowed the lawn, taken care of branches, stuff like that, um, for about four or five decades before we purchased the house, and we continued that after we bought it. Uh, because we have young children and the East Ditch runs behind it, 10 years ago we had inquired about uh, purchasing the property from the township so that we could put a fence on that property. At the time, the township uh, commissioned a review of the deeds and determined that they didn't own the property, that it still belonged to the original developer, which was a company that had been defunct for 30 or 40 years at that point. <coughs> And so the uh, township manager at the time, uh, Dave Holberg, said, well, there's nobody there, just put the fence up anyway. And so with his uh, recommendation and approval, we put that fence up. No one cared for over 10 years. Uh, recently, uh, I was meeting with the town engineer about an issue, and he said, well, that fence is on town property. And I said, well, when did it become town property? He said, well, I think it's pretty recent. And so I uh, approached the council again about, um, I, I reached out directly to Mrs. Florence Lynch and Mr. Cole and uh, Mr. Phelan, who's no longer on the council, to inquire about purchasing the property again. Uh, another title search was done. Uh, they reported that yes, the township did own the property, and in fact it had owned it since 1965, uh, but that there were public use restrictions on the property. I requested a copy of the deed, I reviewed it, I consulted with an attorney and a zoning officer who advised that there actually were no public use restrictions on the property, so I inquired about purchasing it. I was advised the township denied the request because the property was on the Rossi, the reserve open space inventory for the town. And so then at the suggestion of Mr. Brewer, the township manager, I applied for a license to have the fence remain on the property. 
I'm in the process of applying for the license. I researched it more and discovered the property is actually not on the Rossi. It is not part of the reserve open space inventory. In fact, it's classified as simply other open space on the township's master plan. According to the New Jersey Municipal Land Use Law, having a fence there is not in violation of the land use law because it explicitly says open space can be used for private use as well. And so I submitted a request for the license. I laid this all out. I quoted the relevant portions of the statute, and the request was denied. I asked for if I could get information why it was denied. I was basically told no. Um, so that's why I reached out again and am again asking the council to reconsider uh, whether or not either we can purchase the property from the town so it would become taxable property and the town could benefit from tax revenue, or if we can leave the fence up that is not interfering with anything or anybody because the property is on two sides, it's cut off by the driveways of houses on Hillview Road, and then on the other side there's a guardrail and the east ditch. So the only way this small strip of land can even be accessed is by crossing over private property. So it serves no function to the residents of the town. It is completely unusable for anyone except the four houses that are along that strip of property. There's no deed restrictions on it that would preclude it being uh, sold or auctioned, whatever the proper process is for uh, transferring property. And there's no violation of the municipal uh, land use law by having the fence there if the town were to grant a license. So that is essentially what I've come before the council to ask is for them to reconsider because of either selling the property to me and I know one other homeowner would be interested in purchasing the, the little strip behind his house as well, um, or granting us a license to keep the fence up that's been there for 10 years and no one noticed until I brought it to the town's attention uh, earlier this year when I wanted to uh, seek uh, to acquire it. So again, it's not bothering anyone. Nobody's ever complained about it. Um, it is, uh, you know, it was put up with the permission of Mr. Holberg at the time over 10 years ago, and we would like to either, like I said, maintain the status quo or to have an opportunity to purchase that land. And if anybody has any questions, I also printed out a lot of documents if anyone's interested in more details on uh, the nature of the property or the discussions that have gone back and forth. Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming. Thank you. Anyone else? If anyone needs, just just raise your hand and wait to be recognized. You got that. <laughs> it just makes it easier because if like five yeah. people all of a sudden get up. Yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Jeff D. I live on Three Boulevard uh, here in Quantic. I'm a recent, uh, uh, a new resident of Quantic. I uh, I'm an expat from Nebraska. The Navy moved me here to work in New York, and I figured if I was going to live. Uh, on the East Coast or work in New York. I didn't have to live there um, because of the government there. Um, it's slightly better here in New Jersey. Um, so uh, I found a nice town, and, and you really do have a beautiful town here. So I wanted to thank all of you uh, because the 28 years that I've served in the Navy, I haven't really paid much attention to local politics. Uh, I've never really been a true resident of any location that I've been in. In fact, currently I'm a voting resident of Florida. Uh, as I have been for about 10 or 15 years. Um, but uh, at the same time, um, I've done a lot of thinking with everything that's going on in our country, our state, uh, and the world in general um, about the oath that I swore uh, when I joined the military 28 years ago. And it was an oath to uh, protect and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Now, we don't have any classes or courses that teach us what that means. We generally assume that the foreign enemies are those that were sent over to fight Afghanistan, Iraq, places like that. Nobody ever tells us who the domestic enemies might be. It's uh, my conclusion, though, after everything I've seen over the past two years, that the domestic enemies are those who would subvert the Constitution and our rights that are protected by it. And so I'd like to um, ask you to take another look at the oath that you swore to the Constitution uh, when you stepped into your office. Um, I believe it's our primary duty um, to defend that Constitution, and in your case, support the Constitution, because that Constitution protects our God-given rights. Um, my oath is a little different than yours, um, but I believe you all took the same oath to support the Constitution of the United States and New Jersey, is that correct? Okay, 
And it's my understanding, and this is just my interpretation of it, I'm not a lawyer, uh, I'm just a naval officer. Um, but it's my interpretation that to support the Constitution means to support the intent. And where does it state the intent in the Constitution? Well, it happens to state it in the preamble to the Constitution. The preamble to the New Jersey Constitution is beautiful. I was surprised to see it when I read it. Um, there's a few sentences just, just saying when they, when they wrote it down, the latest one being in 1947, but he says, or they say, we the people of the state of New Jersey, grateful to Almighty God for the civil and religious liberty that he hath so long permitted us to enjoy, and looking to him for a blessing upon our endeavors to secure and transmit the same unimpaired to succeeding generations, do ordain and establish the Constitution. And so it's my view that everything that follows, every article that follows, and every law that is written based on that Constitution needs to be viewed and needs to be written in that light, that it's meant to protect our rights. And our rights are being trampled on every day, more and more, by this governor. Now, the reason I got interested in this is basically I don't want my daughter to have to be masked. I think I have a right as a parent to decide what health precautions she needs to take. Um, if she's sick, I keep her home. Um, there's a couple of good reasons for it. First of all, when you're talking about a mask, uh, there's no way that it can stop a 10 micron particle of virus that's floating and suspended in the air. It's just not gonna happen. So people need to be a little bit smarter about that. But it's just my prerogative. As a parent, I should be able to decide that. Now, I don't know if you guys feel you have the authority to stop any of the mandates from the governor, but I would say that you have a duty when you swore an oath to the Constitution to protect our rights. And that may involve some risk. Lots of people are taking risks all over this country and in this state, giving up their jobs. They're being told if they don't get vaccinated, they're not gonna have a job. They're giving up their livelihoods. I ask you to consider your oath to the Constitution and to take a little bit of risk to protect our rights as you swore to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for your service. Yes, thank you for your service. I do, I do, we, we can't do, we can't go against the governor's mandates, but we can, we, we can, can stand understand. up. We can, we can say that we disagree with certain things he has done. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you'd like, I have a couple of examples of a county commission in New Mexico and a sheriff in Nevada who have both stood up and told their governors and their president that they are not going to enforce their unconstitutional mandates. Um, and if I, if I may, I'll hand it to the clerk. You guys can review these examples. Um, and as the government of this town, uh, I believe, I may be wrong about this, but you have the monopoly of force in this town. Right? I talked to the chief of police. Uh, Mr. Brewer, I spoke with you not too long ago. Everybody says it's above their pay grade. Well, Governor Murphy was on Tucker Carlson uh, last May or April, and he said the Bill of Rights is above his pay grade. And you're all right, but I don't think you understand what the chain of command is. The chain of command is the people and you. We hire you to protect our rights, and you have to stand up and do something and push back that's all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Rob Cook, 29 Manor Ave, Poplin Plains. I stand in opposition to the ordinance 2021-15. As a veteran, thank you for your service. As a coach, as a parent, if this ordinance is set up to stop open fields, which was presented to us, we need to fix the app. So I ask you to vote no against this until the app is finally fixed. Thank you. Evening. Uh, Casey Kernan, 19 Arundel, Pompton Plains, uh, former 48 Third Street, Pompton Plains, multi-generation. Pleasure to see some of you uh, neighbors, community. Thank you for your service, Rob. Thank you for your service. Thank you all for your service. Uh, piggybacking off of what Rob said, uh, for the opposition of, of the field usage, uh, 
on multiple fronts. Ms. Russell, Mr. Brewer, we had a chance to discuss some of those points. I would like to say, primarily, I think you both described to me that it was not about finances. I think in even previous meetings, it was laughable, the, the amounts that are being charged. Uh, the question is that, can you confirm that? or It's mostly about the usage of the fields. It's about the usage of the field and cleaning up other they, we did a field usage in 2017. Correct. So it was just cleaning up that and clarifying. And actually it went down from then. <laughs> Great, thank you. So so I think you know what seems to be missing in, in a lot of the paper that was written is, you know, and the prayer was it was a good start, the kind of common good and welfare for all of Aquatic Township, that, that ability to be a community, uh, work with one another. You know, there's lots of folks here representing various organizations that um, all say Paquanic, uh, Aquatic here as well, soccer club, crunch. Patriots, uh, these are all Paquanic organizations. This does not seem like a Paquanic type of discussion that we're having, and that's okay. Uh, there's a need to, I think as the ordinance is currently constructed, so I, I will oversimplify, please vote no. Um, what's, what's being proposed is purely financial. Actually, I think almost every line item in there is related to a charge um, associated with the fields. If you read the current ordinance, you have the right to police the fields, operate under your own policy, what you would look to use to, to police the fields. You can actually even suspend uh, people who are abusing the fields. I don't know if those actions have ever been taken. I know each organization here would be willing to work with you on how do we get the best uses out of the fields, how do we keep the sound safe, count safe, how do we use the fields as, as what I think the master plan refers to as, as a very important uh, issue for our town, if not one of the most important issues around our open space and our parks. So really implore you to vote on what the ordinance is intended to do, um, and hopefully we can kind of put the politics aside and, and take these away and really just work on using the fields together. I'm happy to meet with anyone and then discuss what would be the best use of all the fields so the children um, can ultimately play and use the fields that are so beautiful in this town. I can't comment on how many teams we play that say are so impressed by our fields. Um, it's disappointing when they're left open. Uh, or maybe these travel club teams that do not say Paquanic on them. Uh, I know some of our neighbors I think there's teams that come down from New York. I think he described they would hit foul balls, they would hit their car, he would talk to them and ask them about, hey, did that hit my car, what happened? And they, they laugh off and say, hey, we're not from here, I don't know what you're talking about. So that's a different uh, level, and so I think the town is, is focused on those fields, our clubs are, and implore you to kind of vote for the ordinance and to protect the fields, not the financial matter. We can work on how to reserve fields, correct? Thank you. Hi, uh, Michael Picardo, 18 Kinney Place, Pompton Plains. Uh, thank you so much, first of all, for your service. We really appreciate it. I know it's not easy to be in your spot. I understand, Mr. Brewer. I know what your job is. You're here to make money for the town, and that's good for you. It's great. I just don't want the kids of our town to, to put the bill for that. Uh, I wrote a letter on behalf of Crunch and uh, Patriots Organization, and I'm sure some others. Do you mind if I read it? Is it too much? It's too long? Okay. I mean, I, we sent it to you, I know. Yeah. But. All right. Dear Mr. Brewer and Township Council, uh, I'm writing a strong opposition to Ordinance 2021-15, a new field tax that is up for vote. Except this time, I'm not only writing as a concerned citizen of our wonderful township, but I'm also writing as the voice of both our Crunch and Patriot organizations. We are extremely discouraged by the meeting on October 12th by the lack of a resolution and the idea that the council is looking to move forward with the idea of punishing taxpayers and more importantly the children of our Paquanic Township family with a new field tax. We strongly believe that a $20 per hour payment is extreme and unnecessarily unnecessary specifically for our organization because as we have stated in the past, we are both nonprofit, non-selective, 100% volunteer and 100% town residents. Why punish your own family members with costs that may run too high and not allow future residents of our township to join these organizations? Just for example, I'm a father of four who currently has all four children in both the Crunch and Patriot organizations. As I stated before, there's no way I could pay for all four of my children to play on expensive out-of-town club teams, or nor would I want them want them to when I'm offered such an amazing opportunity for a well-coached, well-run, club-like experience at an extremely affordable price here in town. Also, more importantly, it allowed my family, my children, and countless other families the opportunity to become a part of the fabric of our community and create lifelong friendships. In essence, to be part of the Paquanic family. Furthermore, the most rewarding outcome of all of our Crunch and Patriot experiences is the town pride it imbues our children with, the sense of civic pride it enhances in a world where that doesn't really exist as much anymore. 
We love the fact that through our organizations and their mission statements, we promote a sense of community, not only in our organizations, but for our township as a whole. Why would you want to ruin that? Why would you want to take that township and civic pride away from our town family and our children? And let's be honest, our future. The reality is, if this ordinance passes, that could be the result. And look, as somebody who moved here 10 years ago, I'm not a, a, you know, a townie or some, as we refer to this, children of the corn. There you go. <laughs> right, because you don't leave. And I don't understand why, because this is the greatest town in America, and I love it. It's the greatest thing I've ever done. And to be a part of these organizations has been such a big deal to me and my family and my four kids and my wife. And, you know, the idea that costs might get too much because my problem is, yeah, maybe now we cut a deal and we pay $10. But what happens next year or two years from now? And that continues and that grows. And that's one of my big concerns. Sorry, I was ad-lib. <laughs> it has come to our understanding that the township and the council proposed this new ordinance in response to the constant overbooking of the fields. The act of booking a field and not using it. We as an organization totally understand and sympathize with this concept, yet we should not be held responsible for it. We feel that if our 100% resident programs got first shot at booking those fields, then we would not have to overbook because we would not need to block out fields that get gobbled up by out-of-town pricey club teams who should be footing the bill for our taxpayers. Also, in the future, our organization would be happy to talk to town leadership so that this is not a problem, ensure that overbooking does not happen. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, we're here to give the best experience to our kids and to do that at the most efficient cost that we can. And I have friends, I even have a son now who decided to play club baseball in the fall. The price is ridiculous. <clears throat> We're not doing it in the spring, just to let you know. Uh, but the bottom line is, this is so affordable and it's such a great experience for our kids. And I really feel that if we continue to go forward and put a price on it, all it's gonna do is, is ruin that for our town. And to me, like you know, Casey said, it, this is not a quantic thing. This is a money thing. And that shouldn't matter here. There should be other ways we can go about it and other ways we, that we can make money and work this out. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful night. And please, oh, no. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Matt Ringan, 9 Phyllis Court in Pequonic. Um I came here and I, I wrote a whole speech, kind of like what Mike had. Um, but in sitting here, you know, it got me thinking about what you're trying to propose. And, you know, I respect everything that you guys do. Adam, I, we've spoken a lot. You know, I'm friends with Dave. I've coached Ryan's son. Uh, Kyle, I've got to know you last year, you know, through through Little League, and I certainly can appreciate everything that you guys are trying to do, trying to make the town better. But my fear is, is that is this just the beginning? And is it where who is going to be impacted the worst? And it may be 90% of these kids. We live in a wealthier town. We can probably admit that, but. What about the 10% that can't play? Where their kids, they have to look at their kid and say, listen, we just can't afford for you to play Patriots anymore. We can't afford for you to play Crunch anymore. And when you take that away from one or two kids, that's where it would break my heart. I'm a coach of the Patriots organization. I'm also a member of our Little League's board of directors. And, you know, we've always, you know, from a board of directors perspective in Little League, that we'll never turn a kid away because of cost. These club teams, they don't have that luxury. They're volunteer organizations. You know, we, as an organization through Quantic Little League, are able to help fundraise. And we are able to do things in different ways. So where if there is a financial hardship, we can. But now we're taking, if this is becoming an instance where kids can't afford to do and play a sport that they work their butts off. I mean, I, I think I could speak for most of the coaches here, whether it's soccer, lacrosse, baseball, softball, these kids put a ton of time and energy in it. And I would hate for it to be a cost that their parents can't enroll them into these programs. So I would ask you to consider, but I would also ask 
is this just the beginning? Because I do fear where where what's next? You know, do the are we going to charge the boys and uh, the Boy Scouts for their sleep out in Greenview Park? You know, are we going to charge Girl Scouts for using open space at a Greenview Field? I mean, sledding the maintenance. You talked about maintenance before, Miss Russell. You know, sledding at Mountainside Park. How many bales of hay do they put out? There's a cost. There's a maintenance. There's an upkeep. You know, so is this just the beginning? And that's that's where my fear is. So I'd ask you to consider it. Uh, I will also share that, you know, I think you've seen that, you know, the individuals who spoke are willing to work with you guys in, in, in a ways that we can come to a compromise. But just know that there is a 10% fear in which I have and which would break my heart if, uh, you know, those kids were you know, impacted by this. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sam Sarisi, five tunis place, Pompton Plains, been here forever. Um, first of all, I want to thank all of you. Um, I can only imagine what it's like to be on the town council. Um, I did speak with our mayor. I spoke with Mr. Brewer. Nice to finally meet you. Uh, you guys gave me a lot of background on this, and I appreciate that. I do have the famous Mike McCarthy letter signed by the um, One thing that I was uh, able to find out through the conversations I had is that this really kind of started because of the out-of-town teams. And the out-of-town teams, some of the money we're not collecting from them, whatever is going on, they're saying they're in town, they're not in town. Um, bottom line is, is that they're going in, they're booking the fields. Uh, in my, uh, from what I know, uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays, field two, field three, from the entire month of September, October, into November, which leaves all the other teams scrambling for what's left. And that's why we have a booking problem. And that's what has really caused all of this. Um, it's it's very difficult to try to get how many Jack, how many teams in front six now seven levels of play, players, and on we can only play on field three. We only get one, field. and that's it. And so we play away games, or if we play our home games away. Uh, we play at 8 o'clock at night for 10 U teams, which is really tough on the kids. Um, we play 14 U at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. It's, it's just, it's not easy, and it's really, basically, it's all because of the out-of-town teams, which we, I see you guys are raising that, that price, and, and that's fantastic, but I don't see why we should be penalized for that. Um, I do see the one change you guys made to tier one or tier A for 90% resident, not for profit, non-selected, which is what French and uh, Patriots would fall under. I do appreciate that. That's really important. I don't know if you guys understand what the difference in 100% and 90% would be, but that would be that if, if we have 19 kids that come out for a level, that's not one team. That's 19 kids, and we have to send, what, eight or nine of them home? Or we can go to Wayne and get two more kids to play for us and form another team. So that's nine kids that get to play. Um, so I do appreciate that. I really want to thank you for, for recognizing that. Uh, we, you didn't even know how important that is, but that's really important. Um, again, we would like this to be zero for us, but we, we are looking to at least uh, have you work with us in the sense that you could cut the $20 per hour for games down to 10, kind of meet us halfway. Uh, I am also nervous, like the other guys, that this is something that's just going to get bumped up in the future. If we have to pay for it, I'll get it myself. But, um, <laughs> Tree's coming out. Don't worry about that. All right. Um, but I, I just, you know, again, I appreciate where you guys are coming from. I know what, you're, what you do every week is not easy. 
and I just would like you to really think about who this affects and especially when I hear well it's not that much money well it's not that much money for the town but it's a lot of money for the kids and the kids are the ones that are really going to be affected so all right thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Anyone else? Hello. Karen Killian, Sioux Orchard Road, Compton Plains. Um, I'd like to thank you, first of all, for listening to me and speak to you on more of an administrative level. I had the pleasure of meeting uh, over Zoom with Adam. Oh. Yes, that's me. And I spoke to Ryan last week in detail about this ordinance. Um, this is the guidelines to field usage. I don't know if all of you have read it, but it was incorporated with the ordinance in 2017 in order for it to work. There are bullets here, uh, plenty of guidelines, uh, basically stating the use of the field, who can use the fields, priority of town over clubs or outside organizations as well as um, enforcement of the fees. And the last bullet says that this has to be followed by all members, players, volunteers, and staff. I have been the responsible person on file with Parks and Rec as outlined in this document since 2017. I've been the person to work with them um, through issues and in community paths and complaints from coaches. Um, generally as one person to kind of speak on behalf of the Quantic Crunch and Quantic Patriots, which is baseball and softball. Um, we've had a number of issues through the years and a lot of them come back to this document. There's no enforcement. And I hope that with your new ordinance, there is another document or this document that can be further enforced because what has occurred is an infestation of our fields with the club teams. And I know that you included 2017 data in, the, in support of the proposal, but in 2020 and 2021, the club teams have multiplied exponentially. I mean, like, I think we had one in 2017 that I brought to Parks and Rec's attention. As of 2021, I counted nine. And then all of their organizations, as was mentioned earlier, it's not just one team. It's their nine U, their 10 U, their 11 U, and so on, using our fields. And this has happened because we have not charged them the correct rate since 2017. We've been charging essentially $10 an hour for practice instead of 50. That's a $40 loss per hour for all of these teams. So I just want to point out that the data being used from 2017 is obsolete and that the revenue you're expecting to get from our town kids, families, is not going to amount anywhere close to what you can be collecting from these club teams. I'd also like to say that there are only two, as far as baseball and softball are concerned, there's only one each town team. That's the Crunch and the Patriots. Parks and Rec was nice enough to make our own tiers in the current community pass system. And I don't see why we couldn't just change that rate for the club teams back in 2017 or even in March when I spoke to you. This is revenue we could have been collecting. So to nickel and dime these kids, we, all of our kids are going to be Panthers. They're going to be in our high school playing for our town. It just seems shame to nickel and dime them on top of us playing for taxes. And so many families here have three and four kids. You're, you're doing this three and four times to them. So I strongly oppose it, and I hope you'll do the same. Thank you. At this time, we have reached the 30 minutes of public <coughs> comment. As previously noted, an additional period for public comment is reserved for later on in the meeting. The next item on our agenda is the manager's report. Mr. Brewer. Thank you, Mayor. I only have two items. One, obviously, is the, the ordinance, which is scheduled for public hearing, which we've been hearing a lot about. Um, I talked for a long time last meeting, so unless there's any questions, I'm going to save everybody for more soliloquies <laughs> on the background. But I do appreciate the comments, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to everybody, even if some of the conversations have been a little bit more spirited than other people. I think they've all been positive conversations. 
Uh, the second item uh, within my report uh, is the zoning ordinance. Uh, this evening for the council's consideration for introduction is a, a comprehensive new zoning ordinance. We can talk a little bit more about that when we get to the, the ordinance if there are questions. Uh, next up we have the 2000 um, 21 best practices inventory. As we have an annual tradition, the state of New Jersey promulgates mm -hmm. what they describe as the best practices, which are all the things that they would like you to do, but don't actually make in the law. Um, it's an interesting exercise. The packet of questions is included on the website as well as for the council's consideration. The bottom line is we scored a 21.5 when a 15 was needed not to lose any state aid. So there's no issues there. We had to say no to one question, which was only the uh, absence of electric charging stations on public property. Oh, God. Hasn't, hasn't happened yet. Uh, for the benefit of everyone here, we don't actually receive any state aid, so it's interesting that the state might be withholding it, but they're not going to. Um, we receive what are known as energy receipts tax, which is the money that public utilities pay to the state, which the state is supposed to give to us for all those wires that run on our rights of way. So uh, it's always an interesting discussion every year, but bottom line is we don't have any concerns or any, any issues there. And then uh, lastly, uh, for discussion, we have a uh, leaving schedule for the balance of 2021 and 2022, but that's uh, more Ms. Marsh's item. So if there's any questions anybody has, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, that is my report. For this. I raise the question. Not now. For public comment. Is there a line Okay. Next on the agenda, public hearing on ordinance number 2021-15. Ms. Marsh. Ordinance number 2021-15 is an ordinance amending chapters 152 and 237 of the revised general ordinances of the Township of Aquatic regarding field usage. Are there any comments from council? Yes. Do <clears throat> Go ahead. <laughs> want to go first or want me to go first? It doesn't matter. The comments I w wanted to make were, was that um, we need to fix the problem of the overbooking. But, um, you know, w without really, there's a lot of communicate. you know, there's been a lot of back and forth, a lot of communication. I do think that we need to fix the system. We had an ordinance in place in 2017. It wasn't followed. People are abusing it. Um, we either need a compromise or um, we have to fix the system. That's just, you know, bottom line. Um, and that's really my own comment. Yeah, at this point. I think that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> By making all those different levels and giving them two weeks early to go in and get in the fields and having all the free practices. That should alleviate a lot of that. John? Yeah, I agree with what Melissa says, and I do agree with what you do, what you said, Mayor, that we're trying to fix it, but I don't think charging them is the right way. I have a couple ideas if I can present them or not. You let me know. You're welcome. John. It's your time. <laughs> All right, so I mean, obviously, fixing the scheduling program, I think, is paramount on that. Um, I would say what I would like to do is if any of the out-of-town teams have to book fields, they have to call and talk to somebody, they can't just do it online. Um, obviously, the town team should register first. Um, enforcement, I think, I kind of thought was an issue, but I wasn't sure. I mean, I kind of heard it, but I still don't know for sure. But I think that may be a little little bit of an issue as, as well. So that's what I would propose before we start charging people in town for buying on our fields. Cool. Uh, I'm a little confused because I was coming here tonight and I was gonna you know I was I was happy with the happy medium in between you know I read the, the letter that uh, you know was sent to us and I was okay with uh, you know reducing it to the ten dollar fee for games uh, I feel everyone's pain um, I mean you know we it wasn't about finances it was about trying to fix the problem that was presented to us mostly I believe from you know people like yourselves volunteers um, you know I was going to say tonight you know we give it you know the ten dollar fee and we we give it to the end of 2023 which would be two years you guys are, one, are the ones that are going to be able to police it uh, and you're going to need to report you know teams that are abusing the field usage and booking uh, fields and not um, not using the fields 
I mean, we, you know, we can't be there. I believe we have one park ranger that works 20 hours a week. Um, there's no one other than yourselves that are going to be able to police that. Um, but, you know, Love. after, after uh, you know, everything uh, that was said tonight, I don't know where I am. So. A lot of a lot of the problem with the ten dollar fees. It's still the whole reason we did a twenty dollar fee was to stop people from overbooking. Because current fee. right, it, and it's actually cheaper than the current fee. Correct. It, current. it eliminates the fee for games. Right. Or practices, but it goes right. the same. So if yeah. you have four practices a week, that's free, and then you're charged. <coughs> um, I also, you know, when when you say it's. Um, we're double taxing. It's a user fee. We're not we're not taxing you for not using it. When you use it, you're paying for the usage of it. Just as somebody who goes to PV Park, your taxes pay for PV Park. But if you want to go to PV Park, you're paying a little more. Um, yeah, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I have a bunch of things to say. <laughs> as I look at the audience, I see. A bunch of people here. Well, I say at least half of you I've literally stood next to and coached with or against, or whether it's Little League, whether it's soccer, whether it's, uh, you know, Cub Scouts. This is one of those wonderful days being a council member, isn't it? Nothing's easy about things like this. There's a lot of things that I heard tonight. I heard things like risk. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your service. I really appreciate that. I heard balance, I heard free. Man, who doesn't like something that's free? All right? I heard worry about things going up. Yeah, I'm worried. My milk cost me twice as much today as it did a couple months ago. My electric is going through the roof. Everything is going up. I get it. I understand. I also had other things. Field tech. Punish. No, that's not what we're doing. I'm not trying to punish anybody. You know, one of the things that we are is we do have the lowest tax base of all the towns around here. That's hard. I mean, this is what makes it hard. We're debating here. We're stressing. If we didn't care, we wouldn't be stressing about making this decision. You know, I see a lot of people in this room. I have to make decisions for the entire township. That's 15,500 people. That's over 4,500 residences. Each property pays taxes. We, the council, we're responsible for about 22% of your residential tax. On average, that's 22 to 2,500 bucks. For that, we make sure the township is safe and secure. That's your police. That's fire company one, fire company two. That's your EMS. That's plowing the roads, that's picking up the garbage, that's picking up the leaves, that's fixing the water main that breaks over on whatever street. That's everything that we're doing. So unfortunately, we do sweat the small stuff, the $10, the $5, the $20. Yeah, we have to figure it out. We're trying to be fair. We're trying to fix a problem. And clearly, we don't want to put anybody out. You know, We want to make it easy for everybody. And clearly, we're pro-Paquanic, whether it's kids or adults or you know, my parents or my grandparents, whoever that is, we want them to have a great experience. You know, we, pro we work really hard trying to keep the taxes low and provide quality assets and everything else needed to run the town. So, it's not an easy one. It's, it's, it's not an easy decision. We understand that there's problems. A bunch of you have come to us and tell us about club teams and overbooking and everything else. Yeah, I've been there. I did it was a coach, still a coach. I get it. The system's broken. We're trying to fix it. So that's what I have to say. And thank you, everybody. I, I hear you. I appreciate it. And I understand it. Thank you, Mayor. I, I don't think throwing money at it is going to fix it. I don't. The money was You know, I, I made the comment, you know, you guys are going to have to police it. And I heard, you know, I, I saw some reactions. You know, if, if you are policing it and getting it back to the town and nothing's being done about it, well, then that, that's a problem. Um, you know, if you know that there's out-of-town teams that are playing 
and they're not getting charged, that's a problem. So. That's what we don't know. Right. No, but I think that's why we don't know, but then somebody has to tell the town that. And I think that's yeah. what How would somebody else know but the town? They pay on, on community pass and they write a check. How would somebody else Well, maybe know somebody us? like the enforcement, the, 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 the people from town can ask the question. I, I don't know the answer to the question, yeah. but if somebody's saying it, right, but what right, I'm saying is I don't then know maybe it's the case. I don't, I don't know. know. How somebody else would know if somebody paid us. Well, maybe they ask the question and they say no, or maybe they're just coming in to use the fields. No, I, I think what's happening is they're registering as in-town town, in town teams, and they're, not. Well, and they're not legitimately an well, in-town team. That's, what, that's one of the problems so when, we're trying to fix right. when we put everybody into a category, and then once we adjust where everybody should be and everybody certifies where we Again, are. Again, I'm, I'm okay limit. with putting everybody into the category, but I don't know about throwing money at it, gonna, how it's going to make a fix. Again, I think the, the process, the, the procedure we're trying to fix and doing the different categories is great because now we're going to know you know who's who right but i'm having a problem with the money as well um i thought so, we said that the money wasn't going to be a deterrent for overbooking fields right no i agree because while you there guys might, sit might, here and say we're not overbooking fields i can tell you from conversations i have crunch says patriots are doing patriots are saying crunch is doing it other right. people are saying sparks are doing uh, right so you know to to you're not going to overbook that that field okay there's no i'm talking I'm, I'm, it's not a back and forth right now um so in that respect i think that um you know that the twenty dollars was done as a deterrent so people wouldn't overbook you think twice before booking if you're going to be charged whether you book that field and you know if maybe we did some type of a compromise i mean you know uh whether it's a smaller amount or whatever maybe we talked about maybe trying it for a year but at least yeah, we'd be going is, in the right is, direction this is actually lower than it was well apparently it wasn't being followed that you were saying it's lower but it wasn't that policy that ordinance well it was it was, was changed because followed. i know years ago we were paying for fields patriots right. were paying for but it fields. hasn't worked in what three four years how, how long have we not been following the rule since 2019 when my kids played patriots we didn't pay for fields but you lined your own fields Mine and took care of your own fields. no i'm talking about my the kids last we paid for fields we paid ten dollars a practice and ten dollars a game in the last right. two or three years can i make free. a suggestion let's shelve it let's just shelve the resolution either compromise so we'll or work on it we shall on it and talk, and talk about it next year yeah it's just, gonna have to be done so then, after budget if, if i could just jump in the discussion i apologize just technically the ordinance has been yeah, we have noticed. To, we have to vote it down. So you have to vote, so we'll on vote it, it down. Right. But and if, then if the we'll council wants to vote it down, you, you have to vote it down. It can't be changed. Right. right. So right. we're just going to vote but it down. Amended, and then, amended and then gets everything clumsy. goes back to the way it was last year, which we were trying I, I to fix. I don't think we, we can't work on it. I don't think we have to vote for it. If no one makes a motion for 2021 15, <laughs> it's dead. I, I would recommend just for okay. cleanliness and yeah. Bob, you can jump in on yeah. that. It's, it's a lot cleaner. <laughs> That's the lawyer. <laughs> to, That's the lawyer. To, to we, just we, defeat it. We have to take. We have to take action. We if you're not going to re, you know, if you're not going to move forward with it, Adam's right. If you change it, if you did an amendment to it, like you talked about, that would require it to be reintroduced with the amendment in it and a public hearing at the next meeting. If you're not even ready to do that because you just think the whole concept needs more work, I agree with them. It makes it just vote it down at this point. Why not? Okay. Just vote just, it down. And you're not voting it down because you don't think it has to be. You're voting it down because you need it. Somebody, well, somebody would have to make a motion. Yeah. yeah. Somebody would have to make a motion. So and you can make a motion to you can make a motion to to uh, introduce it and say no and say no. All right, I'll make a motion um, to wait. introduce 2021. Wait, 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 we have to close wait. comments. And we have any. Do, just because we vote this down doesn't mean we can't make administrative changes like like giving our teams two weeks ahead to to book the fields and or if the if the other teams want to talk, they got to call and talk to somebody. They can't just do it. But I think we need to just look at everything all over again before we do anything. We need to start. I think we need yeah. to start from scratch. Why does it have to be all another? We have to review everything at this point because it's. They do want a fee. They don't want a fee. Who's not paying? Who's paying? We we got to go from scratch and do this right. But why can't we can't start just with say those we're tiers. just gonna? Why can't we start with this? Well, let's start with closing this let's and then introducing it, we'll it to be voted. Good idea. 
Dave. All right. Before we do oh. that, before we take a motion, though, it is on for public hearing. Right. I think we so, heard from the public, and right. I think we that right. it's quite clear what's Unless, happening. Right. But if somebody would like to comment. Okay. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? All right. If anyone in the audience has questions or comments on this ordinance, please come to the microphone and identify yourself for the record. Sam? <laughs> Again? <laughs> wow, this is twice. I don't think I've ever spoken at a Board of Ed meeting. I still need a haircut. <laughs> He's been here a couple he times. He said no. I've been, been there sure. once, and I'm coming back. Be ready. <laughs> so, to clarify, the reason that I personally am overbooking is because I am booking for seven teams, seven teams. If I cannot play that night, I give it to another crunch team doesn't affect Patriots. Another 8U, 10U, somebody else is using the field. But that's still not right. I'm not <laughs> keeping the field from anyone else. There is no one else in town to take the field. If, if you register for the field for yourself and somebody else is on it and not you, it's a liability? No, it's crunch. You email, you email it's crunch. And, and, and we let... We're okay with it just fine. And Barb knows. Barb knows the game has been changed to 10U and they're, they're the team. If I overbook, I'm not overbooking from anyone else because the club teams have taken all the fields. There is no other fall softball team. Aren't you a club team? No, we're travel, town travel. Oh, so it's, it's 100% not a, club team isn't the same as a travel no, team. No, club, they pay $4,000 a year to be on the team. That's why these fees that you guys are charging them, it doesn't, you could make it $100 an hour. They're just going to charge their teams more. They have New York players. We played a team that wasn't allowed to come. I'm sorry. Who was it that had the team? It was a club team, and they couldn't come because they had two players from Pennsylvania, two players from New York. That's that's what these other towns. A, a club team is definitely making cuts. It's the elite, right? Supposedly the elite. Right. Of, right. So well, I've I've had people having, I've I'm had people say that the crunch and the Patriots booking. make make cuts also. So. But we're not overbooking the fields and taking them from anyone. We're only overbooking the fields. We're taking the fields so that they can't come back and take it from us. But I'm not taking the fields from anyone. But you're, one. Right, but you're still overbooking the fields. Because, you know, suppose there's other people from in town, like like there's boys uh, travel. There's a boys group that maybe plays fast they pitch or men's. And then they they want a field. They can't get one because you overbooked no, them. No, what they do is they, they see my name is on there, <coughs> and they either email me or they text me. Um, so now Michelle you're managing Zayner. the field. Mayor, may I? Michelle Zayner. Michelle no. Zayner has Mr. contacted Tracy, me. No disrespect, guys. You guys want us to vote this down, right? Yes. yes. Can we get to the vote? Yes. yes. No disrespect. I get it. I'm hearing you. Okay. I know. <laughs> Mayor. Public comment. Yeah. Matt, bring in nine Phillips Court. We're going through this again. It's nice people. Thanks. <laughs> Um, I, the one thing that you talked about is policing this. And the one thing that you see in this town is there's a lot of residents that are very passionate about this. So whenever you do reintroduce this for baseball, softball, soccer, and lacrosse, reach out to the respective organizations. We can help you, okay? One, let's draft this, let's work on this together to try and fix the ultimate problem. Two, let us help you police this. Let us help you check in once a month when we're seeing 10 teams from on a field that aren't supposed to be there. The solution is here and it can be worked. The app does need to be adjusted. I, I think you know, what, what Cook said earlier is 100% is accurate. Um, but we're here to help. Them. We're not here to bite you on this problem, although it may feel that way right now. Um, and we're feeling the love. Yeah, <laughs> I, but I, that's, the, that's the end goal here, is let's get to a point where we can make this right so you guys are happy and we're happy. Well, charge, and the ad, charge the club team $70 an hour and keep us at zero. You're going to make your money because they're still going to pay. Well, and also keeping costs low, right, because... If we're self-regulating, if we have to have, if we have to have more people on staff, when you're talking about municipality, that's expensive. But what, but what you don't understand too is when these out-of-town teams come into town, 
they don't call the town. They don't. No, right. But they don't call that's anybody. what I'm saying they about helping us like, police. They call guys yeah. like myself, Jim Spano, Casey, guys that can let them onto the fields. If we say no, then you guys are sitting there holding one hundred and forty dollars for access. They can't get to the field. So, are you going to now hire? the DPW to stand there and let them in, turn on the lights. So it's a lot of things to talk about. We're here to help you get this solution for you to make your money. Let's have that conversation. Let's have that spring. conversation. Yeah. So when you're Absolutely. ready, you reach out to respect, respective organizations and we are here to help. After budget season. Thank you. <laughs> There's gotta be a techie out there that can help can help us do that app make it make a better app yeah so my name is peter schmidt uh, Hi, peter. on manor avenue um i would like to represent all the taxpayers in this community that are not involved in in the field exercises um so the first statement is i think it is a good spend money for taxpayers seeing all these kids running around it's a great investment I would like to know how much does it actually cost to manage all the fields and how much do I pay as a taxpayer regularly to manage all these fields. And what you charge, what I heard in the last meeting is, it's a small fraction of it. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. cost to manage all the fields is much higher than your intentional charges. Now if the contribution on my taxes is not very high. I mean, I think I pay $80 for the library. I mean, I have a free library card, but actually, no, I pay $80 a, a year. Why shouldn't I pay $80 for the fields? And maybe you can run the numbers a little bit. Certainly, I think you should make public how much that all costs and how much burden that is on an individual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, a good guess is good enough. A good guess is good I enough. Couldn't even have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's my contribution. Yeah, right? you have to remember it's all Thank like. You. Thank you, Peter. Thank, Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Is there a motion to close the public hearing? Make I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? No. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? Yes. And then we have to vote on yes. it. Yeah. Yes. I'll make a motion to adopt the ordinance 2021-15. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Mr. Dreesey? No. Mrs. Florence Lynch? No. Mr. Hurd? No. Mr. Cole? No. Mayor Russell? No. Motion does not carry. <laughs> Next on the agenda is the introduction of ordinances. Ms. Marsh? Oh, now you're moving too fast for me. Sorry. Uh oh. <laughs> You guys aren't going to hang around now? This is the fun <laughs> part. Yeah, we have a space for that. You're welcome. Thanks. Ready? Yeah. For introduction this evening, this is ordinance number 2021-16, an ordinance amending and supplementing chapter 360 zoning of the code of the township of Paquanic. Mr. Brewer, any comments? We had a presentation several meetings ago by the planners who were retained in 2020 uh, to go over what they did in terms of their efforts since that time. There were some items that were identified that were of concern, so township staff and professionals reviewed and uh, made some changes. So previously, I think it was October 6th, there was a revised ordinance with a summary of the changes that were made, sent to the governing body uh, for the governing body's review and uh, the ordinance is scheduled for potential introduction this evening. Are there any comments from council? Uh, I know there was just some discussion before about the date. Was it the October 5th? distribution that was the final so the the document that was disseminated in on october 5th or 6th i don't remember exactly yeah. which one it was 
um, is the same as the document you have before you, it's just yep. in a different format. Got it. So um, I know I was on the phone with, with Mayor Russell, and, and, and she's saying it's on page 44, and I'm like, it's on page 75, and we didn't we didn't understand what was happening. And now I realize this evening before the meeting that that's what happened. The, 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 the challenge was that the original document had to be broken up in order to review uh, the independent sections. So the different zones each have their own document, and that was put together and disseminated in the order this evening it was not the same as well so electronically it was yes yeah. electronically yes gotcha. but it's the same document um and it has less annotation in the, in the draft that was sent currently than the one that was previously set for review gotcha. so we kind of moved ahead in the draft process gotcha okay so i know uh, mayor russell pointed out that the air conditioning units on page 43 yeah on on page 43 uh it was changed from air conditioning equipment and generators shall not extend more than four foot from the building foundation and shall meet the front and side yard setback requirements of this district where the site is located. And it was changed to all central air conditioning equipment units or generators must be at least five feet from any window or opening into the building. Um, I think that should just read the generators because air conditioning condensers are zero emission and there's no harm in them being under a window or close to a house where they're normally put. So that's section 36, uh, paragraph T2 for anyone keeping score. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we're going to change that. So the, the recommendation is for the reference to all air conditioning equipment to be removed from that section. And, and Mayor, we also discussed about uh, the shielded from view should be amplified to say right. shielded from view from the street. From the street, again, yeah. Section 36 T6. Look at, it, look at it. And for the audience, that means if there's a condenser next to your house, you have to have it shielded from view from the front. From which the is street. consistent so with the current. So if it's in the back, ordinance. it's okay. It's in the front. Um, Vegetation. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I guess the bumper's <clears throat> fine. I don't agree with two staggered rows, but I guess that's that's. With, with normal. Um, when something was crossed out and changed, but it had the same thing written, that's that was just a... a curiosity of editing. Okay, because yeah. I did notice that on page, <laughs> my page 79. I'm like, I'm like, they actually crossed out and then they wrote the exact same thing. I'm like, did they accidentally not put in the right stuff? Um, does anybody else have it? Why don't we just go through our papers, make sure. I got a couple things yeah. whenever you're done. Go ahead, you can go ahead. Um, I, I sent Adam a, a list of a bunch of stuff, um, and, he, and he responded very quickly, which I was surprised, so thank you. Um, just on the height in the two zones, two and a half stories or 35 feet, or four stories or four, 45 feet, you can't do four stories and 45 feet. It's impossible. Nobody builds eight-foot ceilings anymore. So especially if you put retail on the first floor, right? Normally you do 16 foot is the first floor, and then you do like 12 every other to get a nine-foot ceiling, or you do 10. So can we change that so it's so we're not fighting some so they're not fighting something else John, I mean, what page do you want? The, do you know so I can look at my notes? The document is, is up for the council's consideration. So obviously, you know, if there's something that you would like to change, my concern about changing certain elements in one zone versus another is, you know, it's, it's a 200-page document, and if we're looking at changing things that I would argue are a design element from a developer's perspective, I just don't want to have something inconsistent in one or two zones with other zones. No, I, well, I mean that would be that that only zone, you know, because I mean, it's physically impossible to build really four stories and four forty-five feet, especially with retail. So why are why I wouldn't want to knowingly put something in there that you really can't do? What page but, are you on? And, and again, I appreciate the comment. Um, I want to go back to the, the staff involved uh, and the, get the, a review from page, staff. On page that. page forty-nine. Well, forty-nine in mine. Two K. <laughs> and that's in the commercial zone. That's for the. That's in the. CBD1 and CBD2. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, and again, I just if, if we're going to do this and go through the expense, um, we can have our professionals fix it. Well, one of the issues, and I understand what John's saying, is in our commercial zone, we're looking for mixed use and to put residential on the bottom and rentals on top. Yeah. We, Retail we, we need yeah. to attract the investment. Yeah. We need to make it easier for the developers and I, I understand what you're saying you're correct in, in this day and age uh, okay yeah. I would refer back to Bob Grant on that and see what he says 
Well, I, I, yeah, again, for the benefit of the, the council's awareness, but for the benefit of everybody just hung out. It's always Thank more you. complex. Um, <laughs> there, there were three planners that worked on this for about a year, and then there were five or six staff and professionals in the township that worked on it for about four months. So there's a lot of interconnected pieces and a lot of stuff. So what, what uh, Councilman Dreesey, which what heights would you think would be more appropriate than what was recommended? Well, you need 16 foot floor to floor for retail. You need at least 11 foot floor to floor for res residential because you want a nine foot ceiling. Nobody builds eight foot ceilings. Trust me, I know that's what I do. Um, so if you do 16, 11, 11, 11, and then figure four foot for, for, for a parapet, that's what you want. So you're talking do we want Do we want that high? That's, that's a lot of height. Well, we're talking four stories anyway. Yeah, right? but, if you allow four stories, you're going to allow that, four that's, stories. That's a big height, then. That's a that's a big height. Yes, but we want to attract. But if you get a developer in here, he's not going to build the building research. with an eight foot ceiling. So we're going to be then he's going to come in, have to come in for a variance, spend extra money, and we're going around circles again. It's either that or you're changing to three stories. Okay, I was going to say. Well, the fourth story is going to be set back. Remember. It's not, it's not Again, be, you asked me for my comments. That was my comment. And then the other one is, the it's other one is, if I can keep going, out. is yeah. the yeah, exactly. we talked about doing drive-throughs, but there's no wording in here about staging or queuing through the, for the drive-throughs, and we know that that's an issue, especially down the street in Wayne with the Starbucks and people halfway they just up stage 23. On 23. So <laughs> I would just like to put something. I, 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 I don't know. I, I understand what, what, what Mr. Brewer said, but I don't know if it's worth putting something in there because we're going to have to address that anyway. And, and just for the benefit of everybody that doesn't have the answer that I provided to Mr. Dreesey, it was, you know, queuing and, and site circulation is typically handled at the site plan or the board meeting with respect right. to the engineers and the proofs. So the challenge okay. is what, what, what I would identify as appropriate queuing space for one site may be very different for another site. I mean, we all know there are certain retail establishments that have wonderful chicken and great waffle fries that have enormous queues. Yeah. <laughs> there are other restaurants and, and, and services that have less so, and obviously we can't control the use, but the, that's that's where the challenge is to come up with within an ordinance, something that is, is a one size fit all. You know, I, w I would more defer to the board and the professionals. See, Adam, I have a question about that. Okay. So. Do we specify in the ordinance about um, fire trucks and space for them, or is that done by the board, the planning board? Because that would kind of be the same thing, right? So if planning board figures out everything for right of way for getting the fire trucks in and out, that would kind of be the same thing as queuing. That is a question asked at yeah. planning board meetings. When somebody's yeah. going over, yeah. they will yeah. say, is there enough room for a turnaround? But I, th I think the difference is, is it baked into the law or is that leeway given to planning board? So, because every single so site is different. Typically, and Bob's nodding, but yeah. I think you have to say what I'm saying. Typically, yeah. the board handles that at, at, at their right. level. So, then the board so the goal of the zoning queuing. ordinance is to create the law of, of, of zoning, right? And if someone wants to do something that's outside of that or different than that, there's an entire board, the Zoning Board of Adjustment, that handle those things. So it's not as if it's impossible to get a variance. Yes, Mr. Dreesey is correct. There's cost, there's time, but there's typically a reason for that. So but that's what this, that's what this ordinance seeks to do is figure out what the, you know, it implements the vision of the master plan, which was adopted in 2009, 19, sorry, just lost a decade, um, in 2009. and puts into law what the, the standards are for zoning. So certain things have leeway, but other things have to be specific. In other words, overall height, we have to have a number. The queuing and stuff, we give latitude to planning board. I don't know how we would write it, and, and in speaking with the professionals, yeah. I don't know how we would write it in a way that it would actually apply. Because my suspicion is if you put together some sort of standards, which is what you would try to do either as a conditional use or, or a component right. of an approved, you know, a permitted use, you end up, you're going to end up with a, a lump of clay that's going to have to be remolded for unique sites. Right. Okay. Thank you. Makes sense. My thoughts. Fair enough. I just asked the question. <laughs> Because I know it always comes up. Yeah. Yeah, bottom line, mostly you always want, the problem. want a clean document right. that's going to make it easier. If we're going through it, let's make sure it's right. And yeah. I just, if I didn't ask a question, I'd no, kick myself later. And, and this is tremendously impactful. So I, I appreciate the discussion. So when I make the motion to introduce it, do I introduce it with a change? Or? I would, yes, if, if yes. that's going to happen with the, the amendment as recommended and regarding. Regarding the air conditioning? The air conditioning. And the only thing is, moving we'll forward, like we want to start with a 
what we believe to be a clean document, but isn't it kind of, it can be changed Oh, of course. It can always be amended. It can always amended be amended. Over time. And, yeah. and they can always go so, for right. a variance. So if we're doing right. it now, so let's do it. Right. Yeah. But, I don't want to go through this again. Yeah, you, you, you <laughs> want, I mean, to, to do a comprehensive new zoning code is, is extraordinarily rare. Right. Yes. Um, to do a comprehensive new master plan is also extraordinarily rare. So it's, I mean, we're talking, you know, 20 plus years. Yes. Um, and the, yeah, the goals of this are to simplify and, and make it more user friendly for residents. As was uh, reported when the presentation was made, there are a number of applications that are made to the Board of Adjustment that are consistently approved. So the goal is to eliminate people having to go to the Board of Adjustment to change, change those standards. So there are a lot of things that um, I'm proud of with respect to the effort that the team of professionals uh, accomplished over the past eight months. It's not perfect, but it's a start. <laughs> yeah, and Mr. Mayor, one more thing I do. I think I think Mr. Brewer has got a great, great point. We definitely got to thank, thank the team for what they did because it is a huge task. Yeah. So, thank you. Like, did, did the team function well? And Mr. Russo's in the audience in case there are things that we needed him to answer. Um, so I appreciate I him spending seen the that. time. I'll give away, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Russo's a township director. engineer. Okay. <laughs> Is there a motion to introduce this ordinance with the changes to uh, section, 36, section 36, sections T2 and T6? T2 and right. T6 on first reading. I'll okay. make a motion. I'll second it. Roll call. Wait one second. Mr. Dreesey? Yes. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mayor Russell? Yes. Motion carries. The next agenda item is resolutions. Ms. Marsh. Sorry. Um, beginning with resolution R 2021 218. Confirming the designated membership in the Paquonic Township Fire Department for Aaron Weiner. 2021-219, appointing members to the Zoning Board of Adjustment for Stephen Stice. 2021-220, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the October 21st, 2021 bill list. Way too many 20s and 20s and 1s. Yes. <laughs> 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 Are there any comments on the resolutions from Council? No. Congratulations, Aaron. Yeah, good job, Aaron. Yeah. Is there a motion to adopt these resolutions? I'll make a motion to sure. adopt resolution 2021-218 uh, through 2021-220. Is there a second? I'll second it. Roll call. Mr. Dreesey? Yes. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mayor Russell? Yes. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, items for discussion. We're required to I, to list the best practices inventory for discussion. I've previously reported on it. Unless there's any questions from the council, I think we've satisfied the obligation to the state of New Jersey and are happy with our 20. Yes, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Next thing, I meeting schedule 2022. I did. I was wrong. You got yeah. to point the answer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do we need to change the, the meeting schedule. Anything up with the meeting schedule? Are we still going to take off? Ms. Marsh, the, so the meeting schedule has been prepared going through the balance of this year, but we typically, or the council typically has an appointments meeting. And there's also usually a conversation about reorg, so I'll let Ms. Marsh kind of lead on that. Okay. If, if we can start with 2022, because it's probably the easiest one, actually. If you look at the, this draft, which was in the agenda, mm -hmm. it's a schedule of the second and fourth Tuesday, with one exception and one possible okay. exception. Where is it? Hold on, where is it? Is it in it's, our it's at the end of it's his manager's, manager's report. report. Oh. Uh, Right after that. Like yeah, We're talking about 2022 already. <laughs> 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 it's too small. Yeah, it's right now. Nobody figured it out. Okay. You've got to put tags on your. So the two things Wait. about this. Yeah, this, this is the balance of the meeting. Oh, balance. Right. Yeah. Is that what you're looking at? The balance. No, I'm looking at. Well, I'm looking at the draft. This. This one. Yeah. yeah that. No. Oh, right now, where is that? We don't have that. It's yeah. at the end of the manager's report. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, no, it's, not. it's got it's, this big it's thing in at it. At the end of the landscape printed pages. Ew, I have to go oh, back two copy. pages past. <laughs> I don't have it. And voila. Mr. Moore, do you have it? Oh, here it is. Yeah. Yes. Keep going. I have it on the yeah. One more. See that big draft right there? That's what we're talking <laughs> about. Confused. Is that the only manager report? Is it, is okay. it a big draft thing? 2022. Wow. That one I know that's thinking ahead, and I'm not particularly 
good at scheduling next December, but if we could try. So the two questions I have about this are, are people typically, many people like to take a vacation between Christmas and New Year's. Mm -hmm. So in the past couple of years, we've scheduled the second meeting in December to be the Thursday before in the middle of the day. If that's still okay, that would be December 22nd at 1 p.m. Oh yeah, that's good for is me. That, is that good for everybody? Um, Not this year, but next year. Next year. No. Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to be really impressed. Yeah, it worked for me. <laughs> I was like, she couldn't possibly. <laughs> <laughs> We're fine with that. Oh, oh I'm good. busy. Yeah. You don't know how busy I am. <laughs> the other question about next year is that the second Tuesday in November is Election Day. And probably some number of people on this council will be up for election. I don't know. The ordinance, as I recall... Is it, is it too hard for you? Because Election Day, yeah, you're very right. busy. Well, you're here anyway. If I could... <laughs> <laughs> I am here anyway. We do have a deputy clerk who's quite capable. Um, and it would be beholden to the township manager to keep the agenda light. Is that possible? <laughs> That's a dig to you, uh, I, Mr. I, manager. I can take direction well. Yeah. <laughs> Especially I mean, from the clerk. Well, how do we feel? Do we want to? <laughs> you can have I it mean, the next day. It doesn't day. bother me. It doesn't, I mean, doesn't bother me. Okay. We've done it before. If it's okay with you. It's okay with me. Yeah, as long as it's okay with you, you're the one I worry about. Do a short and, and barring anything timely or problematic, the, the, the agenda can be managed appropriately. Okay. The manager will that. manage the agenda. I think we've done it before. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Okay. So then the next question is... We, we, you do typically have a special meeting to talk about appointments, sometimes two. I think we schedule two, and we sometimes only need one. Yeah. Right. You schedule one, f like full one, at 6 okay. o'clock or something. And then one, sometimes an hour before the regular meeting, the next yep. regular meeting. Right. It doesn't make any sense to do it before December. How about December 9th? It's a Thursday. I'm good with December 9th. Hold on. Yeah, Don't we usually start off with a big one on a Saturday? That's the budget. that's budget. Oh. Saturday? No, I thought yeah. we did this on a Saturday. No. Yeah. I mean, the, the, you'll uh, ha the later you do it, the more information you have. But the 16th. Is this is this, no, is this before a regular month, meeting or no? No. This is this is uh, this is Thursday. Meeting. So December 9th, what time? What time? Or Carol says maybe if we wait later in the month, so it could be the 16th, but... Well, the 16th would just be better because I have a committee that meets that night. So <laughs> it's going to be 6 o'clock at night, and we're probably going to need at least an hour to two hours. Right. Yeah. So maybe we should do it. Does that, is everybody okay with the third Thursday? Everyone okay with the what? The third Thursday. Does anybody? The 16th. Yeah. Do you think we're going to need two days or just one? Oh, that's well, I, I think we usually do one day separate from a council meeting, and then we usually do an hour before. So we would be doing an hour before the 14th meeting. The 28th right. meeting. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I can do the 16th. I can do the 16th. And I can do the 16th as I well. I mean, do people feel like that's too late? I mean, I can't do the 8th. You can't do the 9th. The 9th. I mean, I, I can do probably the ninth do well. the 9th. The only reason I said the following week is because I had a committee, but they don't meet every month. I can just tell them I'm booked. Let's do the 16th because the more time we have to get uh, applications of people True. that are interested in Okay, 16th. Good point. Yeah, but then it's the 16th and it's the 28th, right? Yeah. Correct. Um, is 6 o'clock okay? On the 16th? Yeah. That works for me. Yeah, that works for me. Yeah. And what time on the 28th? The 28th, the same, 6 o'clock? Or you want to make it 6.30? No, let's make it 6 o'clock an hour before the meeting. Okay. If we need it. We may say we may say to you after the... 28th of December? Yeah. No. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's not good. You don't have that on. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's in between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Yeah, that's terrible. See. Yeah, that's. I don't know how. How is. You want to do the 16th, and you want to see if we need 
an hour on the 20th? I was say, yeah, do the 16th, and then if we need more time, we'll do it an hour before the next meeting. Yeah, but the, 23rd. the next meeting is going to be at 1 o'clock in the, in the afternoon. Oh, we could always do an hour after. Well, order your sandwiches. Yeah, we can do that. Can everybody do that in the middle of the day? I can. I can, yeah. On the I can. Third now? Sure. <laughs> so we can do 12 o'clock on the 23rd, and then we have a meeting at 1 o'clock. Bob, are you okay with that? Yep. You mean the 21st? Okay. Who's dressing up as Wait, you just went from the 23rd. Do you mean the 21st? No, the meeting's the 23rd. December 23rd. December 23rd. It's a Thursday. It's a, a Thursday. Thursday. Yes. Yeah, and that's the day before Christmas that's, Eve. That's, that's when they that's made That's when our... we're going to have our meeting because we moved it from the 28th. Whose idea Wait, wait, wait. I'm not sure that that's true. Yeah, we need to look at that. Where's the agenda for this year? But <laughs> no, it is the 23rd. Yeah. Okay, so it's the 23rd at 1 o'clock. Got at it. 1 o'clock. And now we're meeting what time? 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Do you want to do that, or do you just want to leave at 1 o'clock and, and meet after the 1 o'clock meeting? I mean, then you don't have to have a special meeting. You just have Let's it do after, it after your 1 o'clock meeting? <laughs> I would do it after the meeting, because I, do I don't care. It might be pretty quick. <laughs> well, I mean, you can just do it. You can do it Christmas part shopping. Part yeah, you yeah. can do it as part of that meeting. And then if you need another meeting, it's a half schedule. Yeah. But that's gotcha. a special meeting. It okay. does not have to So be then we're meeting at 1. So all we're doing is scheduling a special meeting on the 16th at 6. I'm 16 totally, at 6, I'm one, yes. I'm totally confused. <laughs> no. 16 at 6. But we were saying, if at 6, what time is this meeting? meeting. Mm -hmm. They're going to be at the part school. of the regular meeting, meeting. so you're going to do it at the end of the regular right. meeting. Who's on first? That meeting. That's 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 I was waiting for it. One. So you'd stay. Yes, that would stay after the regular meeting, and it doesn't. I don't know. Third base. Okay. The mayor's buying dinner on the 16th, right? Thanks, mayor. Yeah, okay. I heard there's a drive through going to be opening soon. <laughs> so the last thing is, I don't know if you're ready to talk about it, but we have to schedule a reorg meeting. We can talk about that another time. Oh, please. Can we do that after the 23rd? Yeah. Do that whenever you'd like. Why, why, why wait? Yeah, we could probably yeah. pick a day now. Yeah, pick a day. I mean, we meet on the 2nd. We meet on the 11th. So it's got to be the, the week, the first week in uh, January. Yeah, it's got to be done. Mm -hmm. done. I'd say we do it on uh, either the 4th, which is a Tuesday, or the 5th, which is a Wednesday. <laughs> either one works. Cal, that's not good for you? Both of them are fine. Oh, 5th doesn't work for me. I just, oh, 4th oh, okay. doesn't work. The 4th does not Sorry. work. It doesn't work either. Sorry. What about the 3rd? The third works. I have to third check doesn't work for me. That might be a court date. Yeah. The third doesn't work for me. Sorry. All right. Now we're up to the sixth. Uh, I am away until oh, the eleventh or twelfth. The eleventh. I think the eleventh is our meeting, right? The eleventh, we have a meeting. Yeah. Mr. Russo, do you want to explain the requirements after yeah. the first week of the year? Huh. So you first can't go away. First ten days of the year. Oh. Yeah, I'm committed. That's the problem with the left. Well, does Ryan have to be here? I mean, he's not getting sworn in. Uh, yeah. I can call it as a new no. council person. I can send you my love. <laughs> he does not have to be here. Okay. There's no rule. So when are you leaving, Ryan? I am leaving on the 4th. Okay. And I'll be back on the 11th. So, Melissa, can you do the 3rd? The 3rd I couldn't do. That was the only okay. day I could do. And can you do the 4th? Yeah. I can do the 4th. Is the 4th good with everybody else? Can you do the 2nd? Sunday? I mean, I don't know. It's Sunday. Nope. Okay. Fourth? Fourth works for me. The fourth it is. Fourth it is. Six PM? That's when you mm -hmm. done it in the past. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my congratulations to whoever the new mayor is gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Uh C E S, Vegas. They can still call it. Mm -hmm. All right. That was it for me. Okay, that's it. There are no reports or notices. The next item on our agenda is council reports and announcements. Councilman, Dur Councilman Derisi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I didn't have any uh, meetings with any of the groups in town this time. I do want to give a big sh uh, thank you to the town for the hoedown. They ordered great weather. The rain pushed yeah. off. That was, that was pretty sweet, and it was a great day. 
Next comment, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm probably going to get in trouble, but Jeff, I really appreciate you coming up and saying what you're saying. I wish more residents in town would, will, would be up in arms about that. And that's all I got. Councilwoman Florence Lynch. Um, I don't have much except uh, I, I didn't meet with any committees yet either, but tomorrow night is an economic development committee meeting. So if anybody would like to come out for that, love to see you there, Peter. <laughs> That's tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, it's here, right? It is. It's here. And that meets at 7.30. Um, what else do I have? And same thing, I just wanted to give a shout out and a thank you to the town. The hoedown was terrific. Um, it turned out to be a great day. Everybody got their tents down just in the nick of time yeah. when, with the weather. And... Um, and I don't know if the mayor is going to mention this, but there was a wonderful, the town came together and did a wonderful job for a veteran on his 100th birthday. Uh, we, I don't know if you saw, there was a birthday drive-by and presentations. Uh, ben Mara, a wonderful man, he's a, over at Pearl Village, and the town really came together and gave him a nice uh, And then nice they did something out. the next day, too. We yeah, and then we went and did something the next day. So he had a whole birthday week. It was wonderful. So that's why everybody loves living in this town. Everybody comes out and helps and, and uh, makes it a great experience for everyone. So thank you. Councilman Hurd. Hey, you, Mayor. Yeah, congratulations on your 100-year birthday, Ben. And Mayor, we did say we were going to do the same thing for you when you turn 100 in town, right? Yeah, I don't plan yeah. on turning 100. Do we have to put it on our calendar now? <laughs> I don't want to live that long. <laughs> <laughs> what day is that? Uh, only thing I have, actually, is uh, I want to give a big shout-out to the Pequannock Marching Band. We have states this Saturday at uh, in Old Bridge at 715. Good luck. And then, thank you, Nationals. Nationals are not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. MetLife Stadium. I keep calling it Giant Stadium. I'm super excited for that. We're going to kick butt. We're awesome. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for your service. I appreciate you coming up. As uh, I'd like to echo what John said, I agree with you, and I wish more people would we come up talk and about stand. Them, so. Absolutely. That's what we need to talk about. Well, Councilman I Cole? Um, I don't really have anything other than, you know, it was great weather for the hoedown. Um, I don't know when, uh, I forget when the uh, parachuters came into the high school football game, but that was pretty... That was homecoming. That was, <laughs> awesome. that was pretty amazing. Um, you know, they had some technical difficulties with the plane, and they were originally supposed to come at the beginning of the game, but uh, not the plane, the uh, helicopter, so they ended up coming in at uh, halftime, which was pretty cool that they jumped in dark. And, uh, you know, somebody asked me, oh, would you do that? No, Dave, Dave would not do that if he was strapped to the guy. So. <laughs> I would not jump out of a perfectly good hel helicopter. No, me neither. So that's all I have. But uh, thank you all. And yep. Thank you. Also, um, we had a, a mayor's river cleanup, and it was really nice. Oh, a lot of the people right. from the town came out last, what was it, Saturday or something? Uh, there. And um, we all went to different areas around the river, and we all just took bags and cleaned up. Uh, Frank was there. Frank was helping out, picking up bags. A lot of people came out. Good and job, it, was, Frank. it was really nice to see. There was a lot of garbage back there. We found tires. We found shower doors. We found mm -hmm. propane bottles. Propane so bottles. Site. We found camping sites. You would, you would be looking. You'd be like, oh, I don't see anything. Then you'd lift open. You'd be like, aha, I found their hiding hall. And there'd be like all beer cans and all sorts of stuff. But um, yeah, we spent a couple hours, all of us, under there. It was really nice to see the town come together to clean up our rivers. Okay, next on the agenda is public comment. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Oh no, where is it? Here he did this. I know, I cut him off halfway oh my through. God. There are no minutes presented for approval, and there are no items. I was going to say, I think Sam came up here and stuck that in my book because he wanted to talk again. <laughs> so I wanted to thank everyone for listening. That was an accident. To the, um, the public what, comment. There is no public, there is no public comment. <laughs> um, uh, we do appreciate the fact that there's, there's good conversation going back and forth. Um, I also do have a, a suggestion about the hoedown next year. The beer garden was a great idea, except for it was like the beer prison. It should be something where, the good old days, you wear a wristband and you can walk around the hoedown. Is that an insurance it. problem? That's what it is? Yeah, you can't the do ABC that. violation. You, can, you, you can't. To, you can't. Can Okay. You can't. Yeah, you just. But I have it, to say, you know, I agree like, with him on this. It looked like the smokers section outside the hospital. 
<laughs> first, first run, we'll, we'll make it better. Right. <laughs> there are no minutes presented for okay. approval. And there are no <laughs> items listed for closed session discussion. There being no further business, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned at 8.30. Thank you.